one. Everybody, welcome to another episode of the Geek Bass Podcast. I am Ramon Miguel. I'm Edgardo Costa. And every podcast we bring you the round of the best geek and tech news, Chris that news, and of course anything else that we happen to be interested in that week. And this week we're going to be talking about E3, of course. Uh, we'll also cover Apple's announcements from the the WWDC. Yep. What is it? The Worldwide Developers Conference. Thank you. <laughs> and the Nintendo Theme Park. I thought other way can What would Dave do? You know. Uh, <laughs> the new Nintendo theme park, live action Cowboy Bebop, the death of a hero. Um, so I sad. Know. And the end, it will, of course, cover more of the E3 that is actually happening right now. So we're going to tap as much as we can. Cause yeah, yeah. Once again, it's still happening. Absolutely. Uh, they want to start earlier and earlier every, I think the official E3 dates are from like Tuesday to Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, but individual developers and companies are like, hey, we'll just do it early and get our own day. Yeah. And so uh, EA has already gone on Saturday of this week. Mm-hmm. Today, Microsoft is going. Mm-hmm. Of course, they're going to have announcements through the rest of the week as well. But mm-hmm. um, we are currently recording when Microsoft is doing their thing. So exactly. we'll talk about all that stuff and everything else happens the rest of this week. The next show we'll cover. On the next show, yeah. yeah we'll cover all the highlights of the, the oohs and the ahs and the ew, really? Yeah, it'll be the <laughs> E3 ooh, ooh, ooh explosion. We'll name it now. Sploosh now. Yes. Okay. Uh, but of course, we're going to be on a show, though, this week with Geek News. And this week in tech news, we're going to start off with the WWDC, the other tech thing that happened this week that you probably forgot about, unless you're an Apple fanboy or girl. Um, Apple started off by announcing that Amazon Prime was coming to Apple TV and integrating with their TV app later this year. This is a big thing for Apple because they don't generally play well with others. Um, and Am- Amazon is an actual competitor that they're allowing into their ecosystem. Um, then they started talking about the new things coming to iOS 11, including an augmented reality developer kit called RKit peer-to-peer payments, so you can pay and tip people with your actual phone, um, an Apple Cash Card, an iMessage, and a redesigned App Store as well. Uh, there are drag-and-drop file systems for iPads. There's also a new 10.5-inch iPad Pro starting at $649. I told my wife I knew it was coming Starting. out. She was like, no, I want one now, not, not in a couple months. I'm like, okay, it's up to you. Uh, there's also a MacBook Pro and an iMac getting a refresh uh, of their schematics with the KB Lake processor. And a new iMac, iMac Pro coming with the Xeon processors and Radeon v- Vega process, uh, graphic cards coming in December for only uh, $4,999. I know, it's so inexpensive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's also a new home pad and a new smart speaker system with Siri built in for $349 coming in December. So think of the Amazon Echo, but for Apple stuff, $349. <laughs> uh, that's what you'll be seeing on people's Christmas wish list. In December. So, any of this make you excited, man? I'm surprised I haven't heard of like the Apple like VR, like the IIR or the IR IVR something. Well, you know. the, the yeah, Apple's doing they they have an Omni Reality kit coming out, so mm-hmm. that that's going to be their thing. I think Apple's either waiting for VR to become more mainstream and like all the peripherals to be like cemented and like oh this is what we're using before they jump on it, or they're just trying to skip ahead into Omni Reality um, since the that is like the next thing. Yeah. Cash in though and get that logo that's like the Monster Eek where it's an actual I. Yeah. I. IVR. That exactly. Yeah. Th- that's an easy so, market. But once again, I'm not a huge uh, Apple Apple fan. This is going to be cool and everything. Nothing's really, really ever blown me away from, from uh, Apple. It's always been like, um, this is me calling them like very conformist. Like this is our system. This is our thing. This is our, I'm like, you're not with us. You're against us. Kind of. Kind well, I don't of know if that's the case. They, they do have their own walled garden, which mm-hmm. their stuff works very well within their system. Mm-hmm. Other things aren't allowed in mostly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, that's the total business model where they, they keep control over everything and everything works really smoothly. And so that, that's a selling point. You don't have all these different variations. So those software developers, uh, have only like one version of a thing to kind of program for and that's good but at the other side it, it also doesn't always work well with other people and uh, you don't have variety or uh, as much innovation 
as you do in other ecosystems. Um, and and that's they're just they're just trade offs from the tech uh, tech races. Sort of. I mean, <laughs> what company doesn't want you to stick with all their stuff I, I for forever totally. to keep their money in you know in their pockets? So like, I, I get their business model, yeah, yeah. but they're becoming less so as yeah. as as things go away from the Steve Jobs kind of model of of of, of doing thing. things for with the example of like Amazon coming to yeah, which the I was iPad. Uh, that's that's one of those examples of them slowly opening those gates a little bit and letting more and more people mm-hmm. to play in their sandbox. So, but anything else, I'm like, meh, it's not that exciting. Apple really just does iterations of things now where they're like slightly better and nothing really new has come out for a really long time, um, which may be good and just maybe a sign of like, oh, they, they have their market space and they're yeah. kind of sticking to it and just doing that well. Totally. Okay, uh, next story. All right. You like Amazon? I like Amazon. Well, could take advantage of this. Amazon just announced that they offered a 45% discount on Amazon Prime. Membership to U.S. residents who have an, an electronic benefits transfer card. No idea what that is. Uh, EBT is like food stamps. Seriously? Yeah. On Amazon. Yeah. I mean, it's an electronic card that proves a certain that you're getting government uh, benefits. So it's an easy way to like say, oh yeah, this is this. I, I live below a certain threshold of, of income or whatever without having like deep taxes and stuff. I'm gonna finish reading this thing. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna dig into that right now. You can you can see what's going on in my face. So, all right. So the service normally costs ten to uh, ten ninety nine a month in the U S. But the discount will make it five ninety nine and still provide free two day shipping for online movies and TV shows and more. Yep. So they're all basically right. trying to get money from poor people or people who have, you know, a, a smaller economic footprint. But really, yeah, they're giving a forty five percent discount on Amazon Prime. Um, so instead of you having to purchase like $35 or $45 or whatever it is now to get free shipping, you know, you pay five, six dollars a month yeah. or yearly, whatever it's going to be. Yeah. And, uh, as long as you have that EBT card and, and, and you basically get hit like a credit card, mm-hmm. they'll give you the discount automatically. And they're like, yeah, ship through us because they want everyone's money. Both of course, pros and cons. I'm not denying like low income people. Like, like, no, you should not be allowed. Internet should not be for you, poor person. No, 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 not about no. I, do, I believe a, the internet should be for everybody. It's a necessity for access. a lot of things. I mean, mm-hmm. I do my entire work system over the internet, mm-hmm. um, and and there are a lot of people who who work from home, who mm-hmm. who do their entire business models from web pages, from internet. So it's 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 a vital skill to have. Oh, totally. Um, but it's also you know entertainment, and it's a very inexpensive way to do entertainment. Okay, the entertainment part I understand, but like. You think you don't tell people what to do with their money? I mean, well, no, exactly. But, mm, mm. <laughs> but you think you know, as, as a priority, especially if you're a low income person, you think the priority would be uh, education. Of course, I'm all for education. So, like, you know, get, do have access to the internet. Yeah. Uh, if anything, you know, that's that's the semi purpose. I'm, I'm not saying that Amazon's taking the welfare money, I'm just saying no. that they're <laughs> it's just like that bar saying, Oh, you have this card, oh, we'll, we'll give you a discount. That works, but uh, you know, I would prefer to see more like a perks as they like at a public library, you know, places that you know they, they would need food, of course. You mean like um, the free public library? I mean, what do you mean like a perk? Like, you know, because actually you have to pay to use the internet at, at the library, it's not no longer, oh, I'm a member of the club, let me in. Um, you know, people still have to pay for the access. I have these, uh, uh in the line of businesses where I'm at, uh, we actually provide our, 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 our kids, if you will. Uh, access to the library, but they had it comes out of their own money. Oh, okay. You know, it's something that we don't have to bump over because that's the thing. I I'm I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm all done with this, but I just feel like it's kind of weird to hear like now Amazon accepting EBT. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like well, uh, they're just accepting as a form of like income. Yeah. Uh, income requirement. Yeah, I just wonder how the business because you know how the on uh, I don't know how much you know about the EBT world. Um, but I know how they're allowed to uh, purchase, uh, obviously, uh, food. Food is yes. a thing. They can use uh, like a cash version, but you don't get uh, as much. Like if you, you know, that's where your where your money. But honestly, for for stuff online, I'm like, unless you're, I know you can buy food. You products. can buy food from Amazon. Yeah, you know that, right? But yeah, yeah. But I and then shipping's free. Yeah, but I wonder if that would cover. Their, There's also their things like on their like diapers and kids' toys, and yeah. I mean. Like actual necessities, oh, trash so bags. Totally, totally, yeah. There's a ton of stuff that's actually cheaper on Amazon than mm-hmm. it is in the regular grocery store, and you can schedule in advance, and you can buy in bulk, mm-hmm. making it uh, even less expensive. So I mean, there are, there are tons of reasons why Amazon would be, you know, useful to everybody, yes. no matter their income bracket. 
Uh, but this is just Amazon. I think this is Amazon being nice. And it's like, yeah, hey, we'll make it cheaper because you know you guys have a lot of money, but we also want your funds. And you know, so it works for everybody. But it's like it is an interesting way to get a different demographic. Totally, it's, it's just something. I don't know. It doesn't strike odd to me, but I don't know. I feel like there's there's something else going on in there. I mean, well, I mean, if they want money, it's it's a it's an untapped market. There you go. Well, yeah, it's not a luxury. You're saying this doesn't have to be a luxury. Mm-hmm. This can be for everybody. True. True. So there you go. Okay. Uh, next story is uh, um, the big Nintendo section of Universal Studios Japan is still years and years away, folks. Um, but uh, far from being finished, it would, the park is already under construction. It's being hyped up. Uh, there's a trailer for it at uh, YouTube. We'll play it for you folks who who are, are going to watch this video. But it opens in 2020. So you say hey to Daddy. I know he's actually working the E3 show right now. Yeah. So there you go, Danny. <laughs> hey, Danny. Yes, hey, and Dan. uh, we have a correction from an audience member. April Cook says, dude, they are not accepting EBT just as a way to prove your low income. <laughs> I guess they're accepting <laughs> money as well. So thank you very much, uh, audience member April. Yeah. Uh, anyways, but the uh, Nintendo, let's, let's stick to that. What's happening right yeah, now? Yeah, Nintendo is actually. I, I saw the, um, the semi opening ceremony for the Super Nintendo World happening. They did have a, a guy dressed up in like in a mock, uh, like a. You know the Mario costume. Yep. Even the the creator of Super Mario and some of the CEOs from Universal came out with the Mario hat and the white gloves and all that. It, it was it was kind of a little a little cute because it was having like the background. Uh, it was very um, like old school TD two uh, D animation where it was like a side scrolling kind of background and the guy was just like da, 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 you know hit the little mock brick kind of mm-hmm. thing with coins popping out. Um, but Oop. so they are gonna have a Mario Kart. Mario Kart, uh, I guess. If they had, if they had a a, a Nintendo World in the U.S., would you go to it? It's gonna happen. It's happening, and it's gonna. Well, yeah. This one problem now is in Japan, and it's Mm. gonna come out twenty twenty finish, just like that Studio Ghibli um, theme park. Yeah. Um, Would you go to a Nintendo park though in the U.S. like if they built one? Like uh, just Nintendo itself? Yeah. Well, this this one is an extension of Universal Studios. So, but Mm -hmm. like, would you go to like a Nintendo Land? Totally, you know, just yeah. for the experience okay. of that. With me, I'm more of a. I want to see when, especially for things that are theme related. I want to see what kind of Nintendo related themed food they would have. I would go with mushrooms, obviously. Um, <laughs> maybe a spicy flower power nachos. Nice, that sounds pretty like a good. Yeah, yeah, you know, there, there are plenty of ways to yeah. do that stuff in there. And uh, Jose says that he saw that and. Uh, he, He's excited Mario. for Mario Kart experience. Now, so, the, ol- the only part I don't know if it means you're actually driving your own little go kart, or heaven forbid, it's one of those VR kind of things where like everybody, like the Back to the Future slash right. Simpsons ride, where everybody's sitting in the same thing, and we're like, oh. Well, you can do. I, you they know, have actual go karts in most of these yeah. theme parks anyway, so just theming them up with, you know, Luigi mm-hmm. things, and oh, I guess you could do the virtual thing, like having a second partner there, shooting things at them at the same mm-hmm. time. That would make it safer than trying to drive and shoot at the same time. What do you think gimmick wise they're gonna have for for merch? I, I totally like like that like I talked about the character uh, characters the uh, the CEO guys. I'm totally seeing Mario hats. I'm totally seeing the white gloves. Um, Anything and everything power ups galore. Star powers, balloons, um, shells. You know, the, plushy toys. The, the flashing star. You know, when yeah. you get that, you know, invisibility. All those seizure inducing things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You guys I mean. Love that. Nintendo's just isn't Mario though. I mean, there's a ton of other things besides Mario-related Nintendo stuff. Oh, Zelda. Bowser. I mean, um, Kirby. You have Metroid. You have, uh, I mean, a bunch of like player versus player stuff with uh, what's it called Super Mario Brothers Smash. Like, oh yeah. Uh, wow. And you have the Nintendo oh. Switch there, which would be a great opportunity with them like put mm-hmm. out their new, you know, you know IPs mm-hmm. through that particular product, like product test them out, you know, within with it. With, a captive audience. Oh, I would totally love like a little Zelda section kind of deal, you mm-hmm. know, especially if you're a big fan of Zelda. The like today is probably more popular than Mario just because their latest game came out. True, true. I mean, keep on Force Rides if you want to, mm-hmm. I guess, because those have been in the games for a while. Uh, now, what do you think uh, for Princess Princess Peach? Princess Peach, like Disney Princess, life like human skin, you know, like I could actually talk to you. Yeah. Or Princess Peach, the big. Fake head. Elaborate head, fake head. Yeah, yeah, fake head. Well, she's always more, more she's a, more of a cartoon character um, than a real life person. She's never been photorealistic. I mean, you could do it either way, whatever's cheaper yeah. for them, whatever like the audience is going to accept. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Princess Zelda and Metroid if you want to. Yeah, I feel there's going to be like a 
Yoshi style related game or ride where you know you like. Oh, propel. game or ride? He kept saying gay. I'm like, Yoshi's Very gay. gay. <laughs> no, like game. He does or shoot ride. stuff out of his butt. I mean, well, that, that's the thing because obviously he has that sticky tongue. So I could see it as like a carnival game where you either knock down yeah. or grab things with his tongue. Or even have him like as a, as a basic carousel kind of thing. You sound like you're later. talking about like Yoshi fan fiction, like you know erotic Yoshi fan fiction. Uh, that'd be a whole different thing. It there you go, some, though. There you go, folks. <laughs> Edgar's Edgar's appreciation of, of all things Yoshi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next story we have. There's a PlayStation Store sale. Lots of great digital downloads on sale, like Horizon Zero Dawn, Battlefield One, Watch Dogs Two, Final Fantasy Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> XV, no, um, and a bunch more. I, I'm my personally, I, Kingdom Hearts. It's yeah, all yeah. about the Kingdom Hearts. Right? Yeah, and that's gonna come out on the system. Um, yeah. and I think it's an exclusive, isn't it, for PlayStation? Yeah, that's yeah. the only thing that's stopping me from. Which we'll like, talked about later, yeah. but still, um, yeah, lots of great games on sale. I, I purchased Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, uh, it's not just Transformers in the future. It's, it's, it's I mean, that, that's how we described. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how I described it when I first saw the trailer for it. It looks mm-hmm. like oh. It's a Transformers game set in like a post-apocalyptic future because there are robot dinosaurs there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's more than that. It's actually quite interesting. There's a lot of um, interesting game mechanics in there. I mean, there's stealth action, of course. Yeah. But there's also a – well, the storyline isn't as interesting as I thought it was going to be. But it's still like semi-compelling at least. Um, I would say compared to it, it's comparable to a game like The Witcher in the fact that it's open world. You can kind of go do what you want to after the initial like introduction section. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, you know, it's not quite as robust and the story is quite as interesting, but it's still fun to just kill robotic dinosaurs and yeah. figure out their weaknesses. Even though, I don't know if it's on sale, but one, one that's on, you know, that I know is a PlayStation exclusive is like the God of War series. Yep. So they, they should God be talking about that. All, all, the, all those things, God of War, um, Kingdom Hearts 3, all that should be coming out this week when Sony has their press event. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they've been keeping mum about it otherwise, though. So. Yeah. I think most of these are slated for not even this year, like for twenty a twenty eighteen release. Damn. Yeah, I know. Sorry, but guys. We're already like at the halfway point. Though, we are halfway through twenty seventeen. So yeah, we're, we're we're getting there. Yeah, but we're they've been, they have been talking about it since twenty sixteen. So I'm like, That's oh, well, games take a while to make. Trust me. There's one game that I'll, uh, I'll bring it up because I still don't know if it's exclusive for PlayStation, but I think it might be for Xbox or hopefully for all consoles. Is the uh, is it, I think it's called Cut Boy Mugman. Cup oh yeah, yeah, Cup Boy. I'm not yeah. the, I say cut as thing. A boy's gonna cut you. No, it's Cup Boy yeah. and and mug. Yeah, it's like it looks like this um, old school black and white Disney cartoon. I don't, kind I don't of think thing. it's black and white. I think it's also colorized, but it's the same style of like mm-hmm. the 1920s, 1930s. Yeah, like the yeah, Steamboat yeah. Willie kind exactly. of art style, but it's mm-hmm. like crazy and it's like a side scroller. Um, and you know, it, it's but it's a, such a unique art style that it feels new and fresh, even yeah. when the game from Hanks are jumping and fighting and p- punching and kicking and oh, shooting, yeah. whatever, but it's the art style is what really drives you and like, oh, this yeah. feels fresh and new. That's the one game I'm yeah. really looking for. Okay, uh, next one, Black Panther. We have Black Panther. The, they came out with their, t- with their trailer. They, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Marvel Entertainment. Oh, okay. Who were you talking about? They, Wakanda? Black people. Black people, okay. <laughs> that, that, can, that, that is sort of the case, but I thought <laughs> it was a really interesting trailer. Um, we're not doing trailers of the week or uh, sh- movie trailer shut down just because there's so much E3 E3 stuff to talk about Um, but this was probably going to be the winner anyways Um, it's a fun trailer it starts off with the claw telling secret agent um, what was not that I don't know that guy's (laughs) name he's Sherlock Holmes friend on on, on Sherlock Um, Watson Watson Mm -hmm. about Wakanda like the big secret that it's not third world country that it's super technologically advanced Mm -hmm. and then he's the only white guy who's ever been there and and escaped Um, but there's also this very interesting um, black power aspect of it where, you know, the Wakandans are in charge and they're powerful and they don't need outside influences. They've been independent and powerful as a country for hundreds of years. And I like this aspect of it. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> I, I honestly, it's a teaser I, though, I've so been, I've been mean, glorifying this movie for a long time because I, yeah. I couldn't wait, especially seeing it. It feels like the first ethnic superhero. Not just that, it felt like it felt like a like a sci fi black people space movie almost, just because of their technology, just because oh, of see. the tech alone. Um, but it feels, it feels a little futuristic. You're right. Oh yeah, my biggest thing is like I I don't care what race, nationality, country, part of the world. I wanted to, I want this movie to spark a movement to show and inspire that like a community if you concentrate on within yourselves that you could overcome and become awesome instead of. You know, breaking apart and becoming like you know lame like like all these other like 
really bad third world countries. They, they, they advance in, in science, and advance in technology, advance in medical. Uh, the uh, main thing on it is like obviously we know because of the teaser uh, towards the, the post credit. Yeah. I wonder where Winter Soldier is in there. He's supposed to be there somewhere. He's supposed yeah. to be recuperating and getting an alarm or something from yeah. um, the Wakanda medical facilities. And he's supposed to make an appearance in this film. Um, I, I'm hoping he's just like this side character. What do you think? Uh, like, do you think there's going to be any influences with the Black Panther? Because I feel like I don't think it's going to be a trend. I don't think I, I'm going to see a lot of guys rocking this look, especially uh, amongst black guys. Is that hairstyle of that one guy? Did you see? Notice that the guy had like these weird kind of like bangs. Oh, comb over thing. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what trends this will set. I'm not a trendy kind of guy, so I'm still rocking the same hairdo from like the 1980s. I think. My other thing that I, I love that they still kind of trap to the roots, like in the tribal form. They even had the dude with the lip plate. Yeah, I thought I that was, was like, pretty cool. It's like, oh yeah, there you go. Oh, see? all right. You know, a lot of just you know, like unique the, cultural aspects. Exactly. Yeah. I like the the tribal mask, some of the little, like the face painting and everything. But it was just like, oh my god, I'm so wild. I feel like it, it's going to be amazing. I know for a fact, number one in the box office. I don't know how long, though. And like once again, I just hopefully it, it sparks a movement, sparks like inspiration, like a movie should be. You know, you know. Yeah, it could very well be inspirational to a lot of people. And the other thing is for Claw. I want to see the Claw. You want to actually see the Claw, I want to see, see claw, yeah. Claw's Claw. I want to see it in action. And yeah. So, was he? Yeah, yeah, he's Claw. The, the other character that I was thinking is uh, the Living Laser. Oh. Because I remember playing... Um, Against him and and Claw in the old uh, uh, Avengers game. Oh. Have you ever played that game? I don't know that I recall it off the top of my head. It's not in the arcades. It was like eventually the last boss is uh, the Red Skull. I don't recall to be honest. Mm. So it's okay. But there you go. That's that's the new Black Panther trailer teaser. Um, thought it was cool. Wanted to share with you guys. There you go. Uh, next we have Cowboy Bebop. Yes, it is. <laughs> 18 years after the final episode of Cowboy Bebop's iconic anime series, the crew of the Starship Bebop is getting a live-action reboot on television. Uh, the Cowboy Bebop live-action TV series will have it expand upon the original story, which came to the end after only 26 episodes. However, the ambiguous uh, ending is one of the most memorable aspects of the series. It should ha- it should be it- <coughs> excuse me should be interesting to see if a new adaptation recreates the moment. Uh, or if Spike's ultimate battle would simply be another chapter in the story rather than the conclusion. So, do you think white people? That they're going to whitewash it? They're going to ghost in the shell it? These people never looked particularly one ethnicity over another, to be honest. A lot of them looked mixed of some kind. It's also some of the future where you'd assume like there's less racial um, divisions. Yeah. Like less racial, like just you're obviously one thing and I'm from space or from like different colonies so you think there'd be more mixing anyways but um i don't know i don't know that i really care to be honest no uh, i've caught a couple episodes not really a big fan to be honest but i always said like that I, have you said you went to oh series? i've seen this entire series okay. it's wonderful to me I, I especially love the the music selections that they make they're very jazz themed um mm-hmm. and and action it's an action oriented series for the most part there are some slower episodes though and that are comedic or just interesting detective noir kind of stuff what's this uh, oh sorry i was gonna say what's the story on that i once again never saw the whole episode like you know the whole series or anything the story on the like kind of the little kid yeah. slash tech kind of kinda yeah that's guy. like a that's a whole bottle episode or a couple episodes where she's like a super hacker well it's um, a girl yeah it's a girl oh. she's a super <laughs> hacker uh and she basically just she jumps on the ship after like helping them um destroy like this robotic mine who is planning to like destroy uh, this colony uh, um, but she hitches a ride on her own and she stays there as like the comedic really full of time, but I was like this kiddish genius at the same point. Yeah. Um, and she also brings that little quirky dog, yeah, quirky yeah, dog yeah. around as well. And she becomes like a nice counterpoint to like the more serious storylines of, of like the adults, like the gambler or the, or the, the, uh, former Yakuza member mm-hmm. and you know, the former cop, you know, so yeah. a lot of, a lot of interesting characters. Yeah. It feels very much like, um, Firefly yeah. and that it's a, Odd cast of characters in space going on adventures, but the, this one actually has the whole plot. I wonder if the guy's gonna like, especially in a live action version, because his hair, his hair was always kind of interesting. To Which me. one? Uh, uh, the lead Spike? guy. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, his the hair is all kind of like out there. Yeah, the guy in the picture, his hair is kind of like uh, yeah, yeah. Out there. Well, I mean, he, that's just an affectation, but I mean, you can make anyone stand out their hair. Yeah. yeah, I think it's harder to find the bald cop with the cybernetic arm. 
Yeah. Yeah. They could do uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, um, fun stuff. Let's see. Next story, though, is going to be, oh, um, Spider-Man related. Zendaya's true Spider-Man homecoming identity. If you don't want to listen to this, just skip ahead a few seconds. It is going to be the Vulture's daughter. So there we go. That's it. That simple. I don't remember the comics of even Vulture having kids. Well, I think this was supposed to be like a, a surprise in that he has a daughter. I mean, it would make sense in that he's making an empire for something. So like, yeah. give him a little more of a, a soft side. Like he's he has he's not all evil. You think she's gonna shave her head and get a furry collar to look like a vulture? She's gonna be the mini vulture after like Peter Parker kills the she, him. The she vulture. For yeah, her or something they're, like they're probably gonna try to do the Green Goblin kind of aspect. Like, oh, Peter Parker mm-hmm. accidentally kills her father, mm-hmm. and she finds out that it's Spider Man, and she it's dedicates like, her oh, life to to killing him back. Revenge. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd hope that's not the way it goes, but I think that's probably what it'll be. I was wasn't sure what they were. I don't, I don't see Peter Parker like holding her life hostage at some point. Because remember, we we all thought, well, at least before the actual trailer and all this stuff coming out, we all thought she was going to be the the equivalent to MJ. I thought she was going to be MJ. Like, um, I don't know that she, Mary Jane Watson shows up in this version of Spider Man. Mm-hmm. I've I've always thought that she was a uh, after high school character, like on, on his way to college. That's when he. When he meets up with his love of his life, Mary Jane, like you see in, in the high school, what is her name? Um, Gwen, or Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy, yeah. yeah. So, totally different chick. Yep. So, that's what I'm hoping it's going to be. I mean, that's that's faithful to the lore, but you never know with these movies. I thought, especially because her, she actually has some physical abilities. Uh, she's sta- if you've seen her show, what's it called? Uh, Casey Undercover, where she plays a spy. She is trained somewhat. But I don't think she's movie quality trained like like the was it Tom, Tom Holland was it his name? Oh, he was amazing. He flipped and all that craziness. Oh yeah, he's working out. Yeah, uh, but I thought she would be the. Um, I don't know if you watched the, the Web Warriors. It's the what's it called? She, it's a white cat character. What is it called? Tigress? The white Tigress, white yeah. tiger. White yeah. tiger. Yeah, I thought that's who she would eventually become. Oh, I see. Like that was that was they're really secretly like add them online at some point and make it like Spider Man and friends. Yeah, like, you know, kind of the, that walk by like, oh, here's a uh, let's see, uh, like here's Flash Thompson, which he'll probably which will show up, yeah. yeah. So, but a little bit more into you know, especially the Spider Man universe. Cause yeah, though this one does have character. a new character. He they have the his best friend. So I mean, it's it's already different from the original comic storylines as far yeah. as the more that he never had a, a fat best friend. Come on, happy. Sorry, John Favreau, but you're a little chunky. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, next story is very sad, unfortunately. Oh, it's so sad. Adam the West, uh, the actor who brought the dead, uh, deadpan comedy and a hero's jaw, jutting jaw, to the title character of TV's landmark 60s 60 superhero series Batman, died Friday. Oh, yeah, died That's Friday it, yeah. on, uh, at age 88 of leukemia, sad to say. Um, uh, he died peacefully, from what I've at least read from other stories. Uh, West received a star on the uh, Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame uh, star in 2012 in a moment in James E. Tooley's 2013 doc starring Adam West, of course. And of course, Batman, he will be the Batman for a lot of people. Yeah, especially, era. I mean, I expect uh, this weekend's Hollywood Babylon to be about that announcement as well, because so. both Kevin Smith and and uh, Ralph Garmer were close friends to him. A uh, Ralph Garmer idolized the man. Uh, he eventually has whole, became friends. Yeah, he has his own, a whole section of his house dedicated to like all the memorabilia he has for Batman 66. Mm-hmm. The two of them wrote a new comic series called Batman 66 in honor of you know Adam West's version. And because you know? of Ralph Garman, that's the reason why he has a star on that the is, Walk of Fame. Yeah, absolutely true. So it, it's so sad. Like Obviously... I don't want to say who's left in the Batman world, but we, obviously we lost Batgirl. Yes. Kurt Ward's still around. He is so. around. I thought he would go first. Really? He's heavier. And I was thought like, oh, you he'd have a heart attack or something. He's complications. A, he's a big guy. Stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, true, but he, well, I didn't know Adam West was 88. Damn. Damn. Uh, yep, he was up there. Uh, hopefully everything, you know, they you know, honor him properly, respectfully, of course. Uh, his... His history alone, it just you know, just the Batman universe is one thing, but man, so much stuff. And of course, Family Guy. I wonder, yes, wh- I wonder what's going to happen to Family Guy because he is the mayor of Quahog. So now um, that the mayor is, I no guess if they want around, to keep him, they can find somebody who sounds like oh, Adam West. I mean, Ralph Carmen. I was going to say who else can do Adam West? Yeah. Yeah. 
Unless they, you know, will, will eventually figure out what they're going to do that storyline with him. Of course, they'll, they'll probably say, They like, could just kill him off. I mean, like, and add a new mayor or something. <laughs> do you think honorably, or are they going to go Family Guy style and make it funny? I think they'd be more in line with the show to make it funny. Like, sure. give him a nice, funny send off at the end, say, in memory of yeah. our friend Adam West. Exactly. Okay, uh, on to E3 announcements. Uh, that's right, folks. This week has already so begun. Much. E3, there's already stuff coming out from, from EA, Electronic Arts. They had their big presentation yesterday on Saturday. Um, there was also a few things that snuck out from other companies. We'll begin with those first, though, uh, including the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. They gave a trailer, which is an update. They didn't give a release date, though. Uh, so if you were looking for that, I'm... Ten more I'm, years. Yep, yeah, ten more years. Ten more years. And then you'll actually get a new, you a, know... The new, actual trailer. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna you get not just teaser trailer, yeah. Exactly. But it was a very pretty trailer. There was lots of of, of good action scenes, moves. I'm like, wow, these are some amazing, crazy you know, combinations. Elemental moves. Oh yeah. You get to see a little bit of the storyline with um, Pluto and Maleficent looking for some mysterious black box, and that's kind of the hint they gave you for for the like plot line. Vagina. Not that these are, <laughs> they may be trying to hit that black box, right? Hit it hard. Yeah. Um, but there you go. The, the fighting combo gameplay looks awesome. It looks just beyond what compared with the original Kingdom Hearts game. And also, of course, being Disney-themed, the attack moves are based on, on the characters. Like the fighting scene that we're watching right now, very Hercules-looking kind of uh, like power slash ability. You see the, the cloud shield kind of thing. You see these, uh, uh, even the level itself, you can tell it's the Colosseum. And then you just saw a little glimpse of uh, Hercules there themselves. Uh, and so... And towards the end of, of the trailer, I guess they're connecting the quote-unquote worlds. Because uh, if you play Kingdom Hearts, you know of the Roxas character. And they talk about trying to get Roxas back. But in a weird way, because I, I played the game. Have you ever played Kingdom Hearts? I played the first one. I'm like, oh, okay, this is this is okay. This is like a dumbed-down version of like other RPG games. I'm like, Final oh, that's Fantasy, fine. It's, yeah. You have to be like a Disney fan to like really enjoy them. Totally. And that's fine. Yeah, because in, in the game... Roxas and Sora are like weird parallel dimension versions of themselves. Right. So that's why I was wondering how they're going to you know, unite them and put them all on the same planet. Because you do see uh, the two main villains together. So it, they're going to work on the storyline. They've been all out. Uh, the, another thing with the, the Kingdom Hearts is love the soundtrack. The yeah, soundtrack very, very, very orchestrative, loud, like amazing soundtrack. And right. some pop centric kind of almost like club like like a japanese uh yeah. you know dance club kind of kind of deal like very pop centric um he, they did age him up like they've done in the other games so he does look older but he's still young enough he might be like you know teens for sure uh, compared to when he you know first came out and the graphics of course insane i would hope there's no great after all this time yeah because they, 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 it's I'd literally be, yeah i would be sad if they're using the same exact engine yeah, they were from the first game. Oh, yeah, totally. Because remember, it, this is years. The The last Kingdom Hearts game, like the legit uh, for the console, wouldn't was... wouldn't give you a new trailer in July on the 15th. That was it. That was the big thing. Because yeah. D23 <laughs> is another uh, semi-Comic-Con thing that's uh, Disney-related. And, of course, uh, Kingdom Hearts being a Disney-related title, they're going to show more of it at D23. But at least from what uh, what they showed, oh, man, it, it made me, like, <clears throat> made no. my mouth water. Yeah, I figured you would like that particular news new story yeah. uh now the next thing we have to show is going to be fortnite which is another game that that has been a long time in, in getting out to anybody um this one comes from um i forget what game company makes it actually now i believe it was but says no, i can't remember anymore but it spent like seven years it was first announced like in february of 2011 um and it, it's been six years since we've heard much about it uh, but the initial concept is was basically a sandbox builder game with zombie oh, invasions, yes. now I remember. so you can yes, ma- you can yes, build yes, a bunch yes, of yes. forts, um, and customize the weapons. Like zombies come in ways that you uh, and and you're supposed to defend against them. But the big key was like, oh, you can build your own little houses, your own little kingdoms, and build traps or whatever through mm-hmm. them, and you just get ways and waves to do zombies coming at you. Mm-hmm. And they've, I think they've also in this particular version of it added storylines. I know a lot of their characters are different. Mm-hmm. Like the four is like a group of three or four people. Um, and now they have a whole diverse group of, of characters you can collect literally as like cards. Mm-hmm. Like they have their four base classes, but they're different versions of them with different, slightly different powers that you can collect through the game. And then you can choose different characters when you're doing multiplayer. Um, and additionally, they have different missions like save innocent people, like defend them and survive and like go collect resources. Um, and so it's a very 
interesting, if not slightly older kind of game system or oh, game yeah. gameplay mechanics. From what I saw on it is uh, during the day you go scavenge, uh, scavenging around, you know, get whatever raw materials to build, of course, your, your fort or whatever structure that you have. Customize your weapons, of course, make your traps. But I guess it's at night is when the zombies are, you know, the bad guys come out to, you know, tear your place down. So you can reinforce it. You go, you know, particle board, sheet metal, what have you. Make it as tall as you want, as short as short as you want. Yeah, there's uh, definitely a Minecraft aspect of, like, creating whatever you want mm -hmm. kind of thing to it. I, I like the concept. I just I feel like it's going to take so much time for me just to build what I want to have. By the time I, I get done, I'm like, oh, I don't even kind of want to play it anymore. But uh, we'll see how it happens because I've had a uh, – what do you call that? There's there's a name for that kind of kind of style game where it's like a, a land defend is it something like that, where you know you, you, uh, there's a game where like uh, you're getting invaded, yeah. And then you set up your little towers here. Tower and defense. There. there you go. Thank yeah, you. tower defense. Yeah, this is I guess sort of like that, mm -hmm. although it's not as I'd say it's more of a Minecraft esque zombie survival game mm -hmm. because you you do get to customize and build exactly what you want to do. You build up. Put up the walls, you put up the floors, uh, so it can be a single room that you start out with, and then you expand from there. Um, like, well, that's your first night, you want to put up a house, it just has a box, mm -hmm. you can build a box, and then from there, you can expand as you gather more resources. You can upgrade your materials to make it last longer, make your own weapons, and so there's a lot more depth here than I think was originally you know, thought was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this is also a game from six years ago that's only now coming out because it was such a technical oh, challenge. Yeah to do so like uh and i think it also went through a couple of different producers like different heads of of the company yeah. came and went while this game was sort of in production the main thing like any video games as long as they keep that fun yeah. factor i think it's uh, it's gonna be a yeah. fun it game. came out and that's the important thing I, I, <laughs> Finally. yeah i hope that it's on other systems besides the pc but even if it isn't i think it's probably gonna be a fun game cool okay uh we have some uh EA announcements now, folks. We have uh, they made a bunch of announcements. It was again their their initial Saturday debriefing of, of their things coming out. Uh, these are the major stories from them. We have Madden 18 is going to come out. Has a nice dramatic storyline of of, of the underdog. That's football for you folks who don't know. I didn't. Uh, NBA Live returns in 2018, combining streetball and tournament play. Basketball. Uh, they have a new announcement of a new game called Anthem, which is supposed to be like this post-apocalyptic mech suit sci-fi story. Um, okay. they showed a very tiny teaser they're showing more about it today with the Microsoft event but uh, it looked cool to me I like the trailer and then there was a called A Way Out which is a co-op prison escape game coming in early 2018 um, and it's really just they do split screen and one person plays one character and one person another other character and they have to work together to get out of prison and escape the law so it's, uh, it's a very interesting concept I, I'm curious to see how well executed it is especially in co-op where the two players have to work together to do anything. Like, I'm like, oh, can you just play with a bot? And is that bot going to be good? Or does it have to be two people people over multiplayer or in, you know, on the couch co-op? Um, I'm curious to see how well those mechanics work because it's, it's especially difficult to make two players work together well. Yeah, it's all depending because especially if you have that one friend and everybody yeah. has that one friend that always fucks around, screws around, messes up. Wastes all your ammo, all your resources, and everything. I'm like, dude, hold, be, just be right there, just be right there, running around, na, 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 you know, doing everything they're not supposed to. And then you get caught by the cops, and you're yeah, sent back to jail. Exactly. But yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting, very interesting mechanic. <laughs> say and trailer. So I did, I did like that. That was there. Um, additionally, let's see, we also have, oh, Star Wars Battlefront too. That was kind of interesting. The game. As well. Yep. Um, it, it's apparently going to finally have a single player campaign. It's not just going to be multiplayer. Um, you're going to play as all your favorite characters, Luke, um, Ray, Kylo Ren, Boba Fett, Darth Maul, uh, and, and the maps are expanding the entire franchise from Episode 1 to Episode 7. I don't think they're including Episode 8 yet, because it's coming out before that movie's yeah. anything going to go, and they're probably going to have their own independent game. Maybe as a DLC later on, yeah. maybe a level but, like, or you, one. You can play um, Phantasma, you can play as Finn eventually, as, as extra downloadable content that's going to be free to players. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a ton of stuff, and the fin single player campaign does look legitimately interesting, and that you're playing the rebel soldier who's looking for revenge for blowing up the Death Star. So I'm like, oh, that's that's a twist. You're not just the good guy. Mm -hmm. In this case, your your single plan, plan command is the bad guy. That's nice. Yeah. So um, any of those were particularly interesting to you? Oh, oh, fun. You know, I. I oh, you I, like you liked all of them. You well, like Madden. Honestly, 
I'm not a sports guy. <laughs> so I'm going to be honest with you. Never I, – I, honestly, I kind of wouldn't give him the time of day yeah. when it comes to, like, basketball. Sorry. The, the only sport game that I played, it, it was, like, Mutant League, and I think it was, like, NBA Gen at mm-hmm. the time. And that, that was it. You know, even before that, the, the first ever really sport game that I played was, like, Ke- Tecmo Super Bowl and uh, – Arch Rivals. Yeah. I don't know if you ever played Arch Rivals. I don't think I recall it, but if I assume it's it's like not traditional sports, like some theme to it maybe. Yeah, it was a pretty much a basketball game that you allowed to punch your opponent, yeah. pants them, and just obviously not basic basketball. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an action twisty to it. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, but anything else that like actually interesting to any of these trailers? Uh, I, of course, Star Wars. Star, Star Wars. Wars? Star Wars. I wanted to see, I see how far it actually would get involved because I did watch the trailer. They did do a kind of like uh, nod, if not homage, of the evolution of going back and forth from showing the old Clone Wars stormtrooper looking to the the modern uh, Star Wars Force Awakens stormtroopers and you know and everything in between. So I I just want to see how it's going to play out, because especially if you get to play as Darth Maul, yeah. I wanted to see how awesome he's going to be. I was honestly surprised, like, oh, you're, they're pulling back villains from the earlier episodes, mm-hmm. which you kind of thought from more recent years, like, they tried to forget about mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. But, like, those are legitimately interesting stories, and those are nice battle scenes. You can play as a droid, apparently, as well, and not just uh, a, a stormtrooper, because mm-hmm. depending on the movie, stormtroopers are the good guys, yep. not necessarily the bad guys. So it's 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 an interesting mix, and I think it appeals to a lot of different fans. I mean, it's not just on the ground combat; it's also space fighting. It's also um, like those what do they call skimmers, or the mm-hmm. uh, you know, like those uh, pod racer games. Yeah. Uh, so those are a lot of different modes um, in this story. And hopefully, you have your own little group of things. But obviously, you could be the whole bounty hunter, so you could have like yeah. Django Fett, Boba Fett, Fett, Boba Fett, all there. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, you could be you know you could either be the the, the, your, your, your group of Jedi's, you could be, you know, the, you could be the Republic, you could be they the, have a Wookiee. all that. You could, oh. be, you could be a Wookiee, apparently. You know, if you're going to have a Wookiee, you, you got to throw an Ewok in there. I don't care if you're just throwing stones, hitting people with sticks, you got to throw an Ewok in there. That would be there. interesting, like a different short perspective. Totally. Like maybe they have uh, unique ways to get around, like under forest roots that nobody else can use. Just climb on top of trees and drop, you know, stuff on you. Yeah, totally, man. That would, that would be that awesome. That would work. I could work uh, gameplay-wise. Like, they have their balance with their small aspect to, like, unique routes that nobody else can take yeah. and kill them at. Show that, uh, that bout, not the bounty hunter, but the one, uh, uh, droid from, uh, Rogue One. You know, th- that'd be awesome, too, to see him as a playable character. No, well, he is. Um, which droid do you mean, actually? The, uh, God, I, well, obviously I'm terrible. Um, but from, from Rogue One. The Roger, the Roger? No, no, no. Oh. Rogue One. Oh, Rogue One. You mean, uh, BB-8. No? Oh, you mean, um, I have him, actually. Yeah, that's why. That's yeah, why yeah, I'm surprised he's, uh, he's the assassin droid. Exactly. Him. I, don't, I don't think they're including the Rogue One in there, because like, oh, this sucks. feels like it's just the official episodes. Nah, I, don't, I don't know that it's not the case or not, but it, that seems too recent f- to make it into like this kind of game. That's why I wish he, he, I wish he, that character was a player. Yeah, I think they might have other assassin droids, though. And also that uh, blind, you know, Jet Li guy. <laughs> yeah, him. I, I feel like they should him. get their own movies. Yeah, totally. that's always That's always my opinion on them. Like, get, give them their own movies, give them their own game. Uh, I think the fans would be pleasantly surprised. Totally, totally. Yeah, totally. Okay, uh, that's it then. We've shown you everything else, folks. Um, a lot of great gameplay footage for this week's episode of the Geek Bites Podcast. Okay. We're going to look forward to next week when we have a bunch have more E3 to. stuff. You have everybody else coming out, uh, Microsoft, Sony, um, you know, every game company you can think of, Bethesda. Because um, it's all happening right yeah. now, sadly. And, unless and, and later on this week, there's a bunch of stuff. So we'll, we'll get all the information for you all. But together for a nice E3 episode next week, though. But for this week, and that's it. We're finished. Thanks for hanging out and watching us geek out about some of the stuff that we love and enjoy. Um, if you want to help support the podcast, you can do so at geekbytespodcast.com slash support. There you go, folks. Uh, but that's it for the Geeks by Podcast. I am Ramon Mejia. I'm Edgardo Costa. And remember, folks, that we can see you again to go geek out about something. <laughs>